make the last animation of this free masterclass and it will be a reveal like this. We're going to keep it very simple and use the animation that we've created in the first part of this course. I'm certain you're subscribed by now, but if you forgot, please do and let's get started. All right, everybody. So we are heading back into one of the first renders that we made in this free masterclass. And right now I'm going to open it up. It's the one with the sliding animation. And the thing is, we want to make another animation for after our rotation animation because the transition that we have now doesn't look very slick and smooth and we need to change that. So sometimes you end up with this kind of process where you think you are done, but then actually there is something that could just be a little bit better and just spend some extra time on it. So it's not the most amount of time. I think the most amount of time we've spent thus far is for the liquid simulation and the liquid simulation was an absolute hell to get done because of the baking times and you just have to sit here and wait. You cannot use your computer in any way. Uh, but that is not the case for this one. So I've got an idea right here. Uh, of course, in this first animation, we've got this slide in effect, right? So it's going like this and then it stops right there, etc. cetera. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to have this same sort of slide in animation, but this time, we are going to have it slide all the way across the screen. Then we're going to make these other colors appear from behind this movement. So that is basically the plan. So I'm going to file, save as, slide reveal. I'll call it the slide reveal. So I'm having it start right over there. And maybe what we can do is go over to this keyframe where this bottle is. Go to the graph editor and select the what kind of is the eye location open that up let's see what we've got right, so it needs to go up yeah like this it needs to go up so let's see what that looks like and uh, now it's a bit too fast so i'm going to stretch it out mm, now it's a bit too slow so i'm going to bring it back to the left and i kind of like this so it reveals the other cans going behind it. So this is our animation for the can going to the right. Maybe we can select this and make this a little bit faster. Not slower now, but just a little bit faster. Yeah, I think that looks good. So the animations for this one we are going to delete. So I'm going to press on them. Then I'm going to check in the graph editor if they have their things unlocked. And right now I'm going to select both. Select all of these keyframes and once they are in their final position, I'll make sure to delete the keyframes. And now they do not move around anymore, which is what we want. So first of all, I am going to have a look at these lines because I think that if we enter in our, into our camera and show the thirds, they are exactly on the thirds, which was our initial goal. So if we just take this one and then divide this line as, uh, by two as well, so we get another line over here, I think that would be a beautiful position for this new can to be located at. So right here, G and Y, I'm going to place it right over there. First, let's, all, let's get all these uh, cans lined up. And this one as well over here. And I think what might be very funny is if this one is halfway, so like over here, then one of them comes from right over there towards the camera as well. So maybe that's a fun thing to do. I'm not entirely sure yet. I'm just going along as, I, uh, as I'm making the shot. I'm basically just making the shit up. So now it has to be revealed. As you can see on this frame, the can is entirely concealed. And the same goes for this frame, this frame, ooh, right over here we have a little bit of trouble. So I'm going to bring it slightly to the left, just a little bit to game the system. And right over here, can this be covered up? Almost entirely, just going to game the system a little bit, like so. And now each of these has a frame in which they are fully hidden. And I'm going to each of those frames. So let's select this one, I, location, rotation and scale. Then I'm going to select this one, I, location, rotation and scale. Then I'm going to select this one, I, location, rotation and scale. And this one, 
high location, rotation and scale. So now all of these have their keyframe at the point at which they are hidden. So if we hide them one frame before, so let's say we would place this underneath the plane and now it's into existence, nobody noticed. And right here, frame six. So I'm going to bring this down, I, location, rotation and scale, and now it exists. Frame 11, uh, bring it down, I, location, rotation and scale, now it exists. 16, going to bring it down, I, location, rotation and scale, and now it exists. All right, so this is basically what happens. Bam, and they are all revealed. How cool does that look? And it didn't even cost a lot of time and we didn't even have to animate anything because we already had our base set up. So this is going to be a very easy tutorial, guys. As we've got this one sliding over, this is approximately one second. So this one has probably already left the screen in a second. And we could play around with another second right over here until we are at frame 48. So what I'm going to do is we've got our slide in right here. Maybe when the can is over here, we could start a new transition with this can, for example. So I'm going to duplicate this, set it right over here, delete the keyframes. And now it's entirely hidden. So let's place a keyframe. And then when this is moving over there, I want this one to be moving to the front like so. Now it's not entirely centered. I think what we can do is if this is the true center, let's check in our camera. Yeah, I mean like something like this. Allocation, right, rotation, and skill. Get out of here. Like this. So on frame nine, we should probably make it something like so. On frame eight, it shouldn't even exist. Pop, pop. All right, so this is how it works. So now we can see it coming into existence and it is correct. Cool. So now that we've got that, we've got a couple of reveals, including this one. And from here on out, I want this one to move forward like so. And maybe what I would like, although I'm not entirely sure just yet whether I'm going to do this, I'm going to select this edge by going into edge mode, shift S, cursor to select it, the pivot point, change it to 3D cursor right here and wobble it towards the front because it's moving forward so it's got its head towards the front. So. All right, looks janky, that's good. Then we are going to have it stop right over there and it will revert back to its original position. So, like this, yeah. Location, rotation, and skill, don't mess around. All right, so like this, let's see what it looks like. And it comes to a stop. And uh, I think that looks pretty cool, let's see. Woo, and it's going that way. So we're going to stick with the original plan. We're just going to make it like this. Worst case scenario, we've got 34 frames and it ends right here. So what are we going to do? Going in here, I'm going to check the graph editor because this animation looks like shit. So going right over here and we are moving it on the X axis, I believe. Yes, so I'm going into the X location, lock everything except for the X. Change this animation to be smooth. You know the way, right? I'm going to set the handle type to free. And I want it to be fast in the beginning, like so, and then slow down near the end, chop, and come down to a halt. So we've got our rotation, and the rotation is on the Y axis. So I'm just going to open up every rotation. I'm going to select this, and um, maybe select only the X and Y. Then we're going to select both of these, check if our individual centers are clicked and right now pop pop looks fantastic very good so that is a pure 40 frames that we can use for this 40 frames and i wonder what it looks like so let's see we have got our different colors 
Now I want this one to be the green color once again. I'm just going to eyeball it. I don't really care about the correctness of the hex code in this case. So I'm just going to click on this. And this color should be changed to, well, you guessed it, green. Now, why do I choose green? We've already shown in the previous tutorial that there is a Canva tetradic color scheme. And I am using that color scheme in order to make this look good. So what I'm going to do is this one should be a different color. Why? Well, I don't know. Maybe we can make it white, for example, because why is this blue? This shouldn't be blue. I'm just going to change this, make a new texture of it. And then right here, let's maybe go for a color that we haven't seen before. Maybe that would be interesting. Like, wow, is that, is that a special edition? Is that a special edition blender and a drink? Well, it just might be. So we're going to make it uh, purple, let's say purple. And then right over here, I am going to keep this orange because I like blue, orange, and then we've got the green. And let's see, what can we make this color? Probably like a pinkish, but I don't want it to look too much like this. So green and blue are located next to each other and orange and red or yellow are located next to each other. So maybe we can try out red or maybe we can try out yellow. Ooh. I think yellow might be the way to go. I think this looks pretty decent. It kind of reminds me of Skittles and the way the colors are uh, and Smarties and stuff like that. So who cares? Let's go. This is our final animation. What I have done, I have got right here a light and this light. And of course you already know this because you followed the very first episode of this free masterclass. But this is the way our lighting se setup operates. Uh, one thing we can do is go into the camera, press on zero, and I think this is not sharp enough. So I'm going right over here and increase the f-stop until the background becomes entirely visible. So that's entirely visible. Now, we do not want that. <laughs> so we're going back, dial it back, dial it back, dial it back. 41 is very high, of course. I'm not going to dab around in it. F-stop 8, is that looking good? Might be a bit too much still, so I'm going into F-stop 13. Let's select this can, by the way, because we've got another can selected. Don't want that. Just want to select this can. Select the can, go into the shader editor. Maybe the value could go up just a bit. So this looks pretty good, and I think I have all my colors ready like so. Now what happens if we play our animation? Let's save. And... Yeah, yeah, lots of movement. Reveals, Shoo. reveals always look cool by the way. Also in movies when you have a camera going backwards and then a person comes into frame, always looks cool, so just keep that in mind. So I think this is good. We can press on render and have this rendered out. We can also try and add a volumetric. So let's add a cube and I'm going to bring it upwards. S, X, S, Y, S, Z. And then I'm going into the shader editor. New, delete the principal BSDF by pressing X. Shift A, principled volume. Enter the volume into the volume. Press on zero so that we can see what we're doing. Make sure this is turned off so we can actually see our entire scene. Density, bring it back. I don't want this to be too much. One thing I do not like we need to fix that, definitely, is the amount of droplets that we have on here. I can barely see them, so we do not want that. I am going to select this can, and as you can see, there are droplets on this, but you can just barely see it. And I'm heading over into a new tab, just going to slide this out. I'm going to add a geometry node setup, which we've already got, by the way, but I'm just going to add it in this uh, vision. And as you remember, we've got our icosphere, which is being uh, placed on this one, the random value and map range node determine the scale. So we have uh, random valuations. This one is smaller than this one, for example. But what we need to do is increase the two max. We need 0 0.05. All right, so this is indeed the correct scaling for these droplets. I think they are visible enough now. And maybe we can use a little bit more of them. So we've got our geometry node density set up right here. I'll show you how that worked. 
we plugged it into this group input slot and now we can play around with it manually in our modifiers just as if it is a modifier that we created for ourselves. 13, not too much. All right, so this looks pretty good. Now we've actually got some visible droplets on here and uh, I think this looks fine and dandy and we can just uh, go over to the rendering of this image, I believe. I think there's nothing much more to be done. So this is basically what we've got. We have got our reveal animation and the purples coming forward and coming to a standstill. So that's basically it. Uh, we've got our volumetric added, we've got our different colors, we've got our reveal, our animation, everything is done. So we're going to just render this animation out. And then in the final video, we are going to edit this entire piece together and I will show you exactly how to make sure that it fits the beat that we have enough frames in our animation so that you can calculate backwards and once we've done that we are going to make sure that it looks slick and smooth and that the animation is worth selling so in the next part of this product animation masterclass, we are editing the final pieces together. I think this video will be quite useful for you as a lot of people struggle with this process and there aren't a lot of videos about it. Click here to watch it now. <laughs>